Okay, in that case, that's a good segue to what we are going to do now. It's going to be again based on some axioms or some properties that we want to satisfy. And in terms of the big picture, why do we do uh, understanding? Why do we do explainable AI? First of all, it's going to help us as the ones who are actually designing these neural networks to understand our models better and perhaps design better architectures. And we saw that in the case of the first paper that we covered, perhaps using 11 by 11 convolutions on the first layer was not a good idea. Perhaps using seven by seven is better. It can help you debug, debug your data and debug your models. Maybe something is wrong with your data, take a look at it. And if nothing is wrong with your data, then something is wrong with your model, with your neural network. We can actually extract rules. And this is useful when you're doing AI for science. Maybe look at the brain activity in some particular images. And then that can help you drive insight. If you know what your neural network is taking off, if you know what your neural network is emphasizing, then perhaps you can extract some rules, some scientific rules out of it. And in the end of the day, you're putting your neural networks into production, some end user is going to use it. For instance, if you put it in a self-driving car, some end user is going to sit in that self-driving car. You need to show the user what your neural network is thinking of. Is it actually seeing the stop sign or is it stopping because of some random reason? And those visualizations are going to help your end, end user build trust. This one is about attribution. And we have been doing attribution all the way along up until this point in the course. You have a neural network, it's predicting something, maybe a particular class, and it's taking as inputs some features, which could be pixels in your image. You have some input that you want to analyze, that's your input image. You have a baseline that you're gonna compare to. So this is very similar to what we were doing with deep lift. There is some baseline, which could be a black image or some zero embedded vectors for your text. And then for each pixel in your input or each feature in your input, you want to associate an importance or you want to attribute some importance relative to some baseline. So this A is gonna be a function of your neural network that you're analyzing, the current input that you want to study and some baseline. And each component of your A, A is a vector, each component, is going to correspond to every single pixel in your image. And it's going to be the contribution of that pixel to your prediction. And as I just mentioned, we have this counterfactual interpretation or intuition. That's how we as humans think. If you want to blame something or assign credit to something, maybe to a certain cause, you're going to assign that credit to it or blame it for that, and then consider what's going to happen if that cause doesn't exist anymore. You're gonna associate some importance to this pixel, associate that importance to that particular pixel, but then consider the case where that pixel doesn't exist. What's gonna happen? And that's gonna give you your baseline, which is your black image. And that's why intuitively speaking, you use baselines. What is the idea of integrated gradients? It's the same as before. Gradients could end up being zero or non-existent or vanishing or exploding rather than looking at the gradient at a particular point, integrate your gradients. What is that? You're going to take a look at the line between your baseline and your current input. So you have two images. One of them is a black image. The other one is the image that you want to analyze. You build a line between them, and then you're going to integral or integrate along that line. And you're integrating your gradients. And then similar to gradient times the difference, you're going to multiply it by the difference. Because here you're analyzing the existence or absence of a feature. How important is the existence of something? So you are putting a question mark on the existence of a particular pixel. And this integral is going to help you smooth out your gradients. The integral, you're not going to compute it uh, analytically, because this is a deep neural network. It's a derivative of a deep neural network. You're going to use some quadrature rule. You're going to pick some grid and then turn that integral into a summation in practice. And then in practice, depending on your data and neural network, you can play around with your M, which is a hyperparameter. The cool thing is 
this integrated gradient is going to satisfy some axioms. Now we want to evaluate it. It's going to satisfy some axioms. It's going to be complete. What do you mean? Your f of x, especially in the case where f of x prime is approximately zero, is going to be the summation of the importance of your inputs. And we saw this property also when you were doing LRP or when you were doing uh, deep lift. So you had a similar property. So that's complete. And I usually choose x prime so that the prediction of your model is zero approximately. It's gonna, because of this completeness axiom, you're gonna satisfy some sensitivity property. What is that? If you choose a pair of input and a baseline that they only differ in one feature, in one pixel, but they give you different predictions. So you change one pixel and they're gonna give you different predictions. What is the idea then? That pixel should be important. It means that you need to associate a non-zero attribution to it, a non-zero A. And this is a direct consequence of this complete completeness. You can just use this formula and you're gonna find it. It turns out that deconv nets and guided backpropagation are gonna violate this sensitivity axiom. This integrated gradient is gonna satisfy another axiom, which is implementation invariance. Let's say you have two functionally equivalent neural networks. What do I mean by that? If you give them the same input, they're gonna give you the same predictions. Maybe their weights and biases and the way that you train them are different. Maybe the internal workings of your neural networks are different, but their predictions are gonna end up being the same. So they are functionally equivalent. They should give you the same attribution. And this integrated gradient is gonna give you that. Pick two neural networks functionally equivalent and compute these uh, integrated gradients and you're gonna attribute the same importance to every single pixel in your image. So it doesn't really matter what you, your neural network is doing internally. Deep leaf and LRP do not satisfy this. Not only that, it's gonna satisfy some other nice axioms like sensitivity version B. The idea is that if your neural network does not depend on some variable, maybe some pixels are not important, your prediction is not gonna depend on them. Then the corresponding attribution to that variable should be zero. An integrated gradient is gonna satisfy that axiom. It's gonna satisfy linearity. If there are any linearity within your neural network, then these attributions are gonna satisfy that. Visually speaking, and let's take a look at some pictures and compare that to uh, gradient-based methods. This is your original image. Your model is 99% confident that this is a reflex camera. Your integrated gradient is gonna highlight these points and say, I'm making my decision based on the importance of these points. And your gradients are putting some importance on the area around the camera. You can also start interpreting other types of data. For instance, if you are doing translation from English to German, then you're gonna see that uh, your neural network is focusing more while trying to predict morning on Morgan, the translation of morning in, in uh, German. But why are you going the axiomatic route, these properties route? Because there are no good metrics for telling the difference between how good a method of interpreting a neural network is compared to the other one. And maybe because integrated gradients are satisfying these axioms that they make sense while the other ones don't, maybe it's gonna help you trust your interpretation scheme more. Another reason why you're going this axiomatic approach is that in the end of the day, you want to debug. You want to debug your data, you want to debug your neural network using a method. And the predictions of your model could be wrong for a particular data because something is wrong with your data. There are some artifacts in your data. Maybe there are some artifacts in your neural network. Maybe rather than using 11 by 11 convolutions, you should use seven by seven. If you don't do that, your neural network is gonna give you some artifacts. But then the method that you're using to come up with your debugging, debugging scheme should not have artifacts of its own. And maybe because something like integrated gradient or sharp values, because they are satisfying some axioms, you can say that there are no artifacts in my interpretation scheme because some gradients are vanishing or exploding or they're zero or non-existent. And that's the big picture. Any questions about it?